You probably remember that time Disney let a cricket play with fireworks? But like what? You might even remember that time Disney tried to unite the world with a floating TV. That's too bad. That must have been a really expensive LED television globe. But do you remember that time Disney made a dance routine from your childhood trauma? I think maybe we can leave the boy donkeys in the past. Disney has had some big and beautiful nighttime spectaculars in the past, so let's hold back our tears. I cried 10,000 times. As we remember that time. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Disneyland proudly presents the Main Street Electrical Parade. The Main Street Electrical Parade was a nighttime parade dazzling down Main Street. It ran in both Disney World and Disneyland over a period of several years. Thousands of lights, mu electronic music, and Disney spectacle. That ran far longer than it should have. It featured lit up parade floats in a variety of characters, some of which you would never expect to see in a parade. I always remember the Blue Fairy. Uh -huh. It's the Blue Fairy. I mean, she was really beautiful and sparkling and very blue. Big Mushroom with Alice. Turtle with Hat. A jaunty hat. He's a goodie. Turtle with glasses. That's a classic. Snail. Incredible. Mushroom. What a great way to end your Disney day. There are two caterpillars. One caterpillar is very judgy, and the other one is just fun. Peach Dragon, which nobody cares about. I love that movie. Might I say, Maleficent Dragon Float Who? Peach Dragon was first, and he never caught on fire. If there's any like legit Disney characters, I don't remember them from the Main Street Electrical Parade. I'm remembering these like little side pieces. Things that kind of scared me as a child were... were... The donkey boys are there from Pinocchio, themed after the Pleasure Island scene in that movie, which I don't know if you've seen it recently. It is literally terrifying. Pinocchio is a horror movie. A horrifying nightmare. And so you've got the Pleasure Island float with the horrifying Pleasure Island's like head that looks like a scary ventriloquist doll. But behind the float, there are grown men dressed as boys, halfway into turning into donkeys. Remember that horrific event in your life? Let's choreograph a number to this terrible cell phone music and let's dress men as boy donkeys and everything will be great. I loved the, the, the excitement of how dramatically the lights would turn off with the announcement and when that theme song. Techno music though? Electro synthomagnetic musical sounds. It sounds like an old tiny cell phone. And by old timey, I mean the 90s. It's called Baroque Hoedown, and it's by a musical duo called Perry and Kingsley, who were actually pioneers in using. <laughs> calling it a Moog or a Moog. If you call it a Moog, somebody will say, well, you know his name's actually Robert Moog. <laughs> but anyway, so um, Perry and Kingsley actually recorded an entire album. campaign for that to be the theme song and indeed it ended up being. I would love nothing more than to give my rendition of the Main Street Electric Parade music. Oh my gosh! It was a really pretty parade, but that song. The Main Street Electrical Parade was filled with lit up nightmares. People like that. Techno. Electro synthomagnetic musical sounds was never the right move but the lights were nice. It's the parade that just keeps on giving. It'll always come back. Always.
wishes if I have to tell you. It was an incredibly long running nighttime spectacular. It was a fireworks show. That ran 14 years in the Magic Kingdom, right above Cinderella Castle. And it was fireworks and lights and music and also heartwarming joy for everyone to see. It was the kiss goodnight. It's gonna make you believe in the power of your wishes. It was literally a wish come true, literally. The full name of wishes. Mm. It's not just wishes? Wishes. A. A Magical Gathering of Disney Dreams TM. I think we should just call it wishes. I have seen wishes 10,000 times and I cried all 10,000. I loved it because I have a heart. That's how they determine who is a human if robots were to arrive. Listen, I'm just gonna start off and be controversial. It's better than Happily Ever After. It was a great show that encapsulated a lot of Disney magic. What more could you ask for? Ask the robots if they liked wishes and then the robots would say no probably because they're robots um, and they don't like things. I don't remember what the question was, but I have a lot of thoughts on wishes. My favorite part of wishes was the wish sequence. When Go the Distance starts playing, I would get emotional every single time. You can go the distance, Hercules. You got this. I really like when that first big firework, the shooting star firework, goes right over the castle. By the way, that was a firework. I don't know if you cut it. <laughs> but it's like, it's like there in front of you, like. <laughs> do, 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 do. There is no quicker way for tears to come to my eyes than when Tinkerbell takes off and everybody in the crowd, especially all the kids, looks up and sees Tinkerbell flying for the first time. What? Oh, how are they doing this? That must really be Tinkerbell. She is really flying. Oh my gosh, she has to be freezing. It's cold. I can quote a lot from the Wishes show. Jiminy Cricket says some pretty heartwarming things like about Wish about wishes. <clears throat> All right, Jiminy, better be you proud. Oh, uh -huh. it's the blue fairy. That's Mickey. That's really Mickey Mouse. See what a little wishing can do. Follow your heart, and if you listen to your soul, the wishes that you wish will come true. My oh my! See what a little wishing can do. And that, my friends, is where the magic lives. The best part is you'll never run out of wishes. Hi folks, it's Jiminy Cricket. They're shining deep down inside. So you see, it's all about wishes in your heart and in your dreams. And uh, I hope you enjoyed our very cool fireworks that I set off personally from the ground. I'm Jiminy Cricket and I'm standing behind the castle right now holding 75 sparklers. Get ready. Here's the finale. You remember that part? For the record, Jiminy Cricket impressions? Not easy. I think I'm one of the best. <clears throat> yes, I can. You hear this child and you imagine in your mind that they're sitting there with their mouse ears on with balloons and a lollipop and they're like, I have the voice of a children's choir. Come out of these pipes. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, how does it start? Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Wishes. Okay. Hold on. I need a prop. Wishes. Dream a dream. There's nothing good in here for me to sing into. Wishes. Wishes. Wishes was replaced by Happily Ever After, which, while it still has fireworks, it's mostly a projection show. Obviously, which one is better is a tough question. Oh, that is a divisive question. Wishes is 100% better. Okay. I don't care for the Disney Channel original stars that are singing Happily Ever After. Projections that make the castle literally come alive. More fireworks, better nighttime spectacular. Sorry, wishes. Sorry. Not sorry. 
Wishes was a gr fantastic show. I think it um, broke the mold for a lot of fireworks spectaculars. And Happily Ever After came and was like, hi, I have long pretty hair. I'm a model. I just got signed to ING. Wishes was truly one of my favorite things that I ever saw at Disney and I'm sad it's not there anymore. Not to be dramatic, but Wishes was like a quintessential part of my Magic Kingdom experience. Wishes is like what I grew up with. It's Wishes and you're you're ripping away my childhood. This whole piece is me just being like, happily ever after is trash. Whoever <laughs> said it in this, do not use this out my to be saying it's trash. I don't think it's trash. I just don't like it as much as Wishes. <laughs> Spectacle of Family, what is it? The Osborne Spectacle, the Osborne Family. The Main Street Electrical Lights were in. Um, she just said the Main Street Electrical Lights. Osborne Family Spectacle of Dancing Lights. Disney's like, hey, you know what's great? Adjectives. Put those in the names. Just all of them. All of the adjectives. Get the adjective bucket. Put him in the main. Was a nighttime spectacular in Hollywood Studios. It's the American dream, really. It started in 1986 with a thousand lights and, and grew to three million, you know, not that many years later. They were started by, I believe his name is Jennings Osborne. He put a lot of Christmas lights in his yard. It was fun and great and it went to music and then... As any good neighborhood would do, the Osborne family had a rival. Some neighbors complained. And then he was asked to shut it down. Like the Hatfields and McCoy. Hatfields and McCoy of Christmas lights. So I went to court and unfortunately the presiding judge was the Grinch. I think Judge Clarence Thomas, who ultimately decided that they couldn't do the, the light display anymore. Disney got wind of this. at the now defunct Streets of America section of Hollywood Studios. You were transported into a Hallmark movie. It was like being in the Christmas Hallmark movie of your imagination. I don't know about Mars. I don't know about Jupiter. I don't know about any other planet in the solar system. As for Earth, the Osborne family lights were the most beautiful lights that you could ever see. And there's nothing better than just having a cup of cocoa and walking up and down the streets and listening to all the music. I remember that it was quite the mix. Um, Osborne Lights were basically that girl who's like, I like all genres. I remember the fast Jingle Bell song. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun, oh, what fun, jingle bell, jingle. And it would like go back and forth and then the lights would flash, flash and I'll just be like, ooh, jazzy, jazzy Christmas. It was, it was a little bit of a, Potpourri. I feel like I have an estranged aunt somewhere that has that CD. Terry has a weird collection of Disney Disney CDs. You could go from Mannheim Steamroller <laughs> to ACDC. <laughs> I have an unpopular opinion about the Osborne Spectacle of Dancing Lights. It was beautiful. It was a masterpiece. It was a Christmas miracle. Not my favorite. Um. Yeah. I went. I looked at them. They twinkled. They were cool. I've yet to forgive Disney for getting rid of the Osborne lights. They, it doesn't feel like Christmas without them. It was such a delight. It was something I looked forward to every holiday season. And I understand Galaxy's Edge is better than the Streets of America, but I'm a little bummed. And by a little, I mean a lot bummed that they didn't get moved to another part of another park. <sighs> Hollywood Studios is not as good without it. They gotta bring it back, man. <sighs> Getting rid of the Osborne family of lights is a tragedy. <sighs> Why don't we just put the lights up in Galaxy's Edge? Chewbacca can come out and just do like Christmas carols with his like screeching. Osborne lights are back, baby. I loved Illuminations. Illuminations Reflections of Earth was the nighttime spectacular at Epcot for the Millennium Celebration. They were like, let's ignore Y2K. Spoiler alert, but Y2K didn't happen. So everything was fine. And then it was so fine that they were like, that's good enough for 20 years. Up until 2019, 
That featured fireworks showcasing all of the countries of uh, the World Showcase and the world. Storytelling together as one. Well. And it was dope. That was actually out of probably any Disney nighttime spectacular, that was the one that I was most likely to wait around for at night. So at the beginning, so you're standing there, it's dark, and then Jim Cummings is like, good evening. And then you're like, ah! Really? No wonder I like it so much. Man, Jim Cummings is just, He's a legend. Jim Cummings was the narrator of Illuminations, who is also the voice of Tigger, or Winnie the Pooh, or Hondo from Smuggler's Run and the Star Wars series, and Peg Leg Pete, and he was the narrator of Illuminations. We hope you enjoy our story tonight. And then all the lights go around World Showcase, and then you're like, okay, now it's gonna start, and it's just gonna give us a nice, easy intro. No! That used to be my alarm clock. Boo! And then it's like, boom, boom. And then it's like, dun, 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 dun. We go on. And then they brought the globe out. Get ready. They have this globe that's a TV. Screens on it. But if you squinted your eyes and went like this, kind of looked like something. I find it incredibly hard to believe that in 20 years, we can't update a twirling globe with screens. And it really just brought the mood down to the whole event. I'm up here. And then my mood drastically lowered. It wasn't perfect, but that's what made it so good. Cause it was just, at the time, this is the best thing we saw. And we just thought it was so amazing. The finale was neat, right? I think the massive fireball was also cool. I think I'm, I think I'm supposed to like that. Uh, I don't like that I left with no eyebrows. That's too bad. After the show was over, I couldn't stop crying and my parents thought they were going to have to find out what happens when people have psychological problems in Disney theme parks. And I would like to see an episode of Disney Food Blog about it. Is this all ears? But I would like Molly to do an all ears episode about that. Chop, chop. I got things to eat and drink. Illuminations was replaced in 2019 by Epcot Forever, which was a nod to Epcot attractions, past and present. But like, that wasn't all winners. Like, hey, remember this real flop? Let's put it in the sky. And then that is eventually going to be replaced with a longer term show, Harmonious. I'm intrigued, is all I have to say. Zzz, harmonious. And I assume that that's going to be good. <laughs> why did you get rid of Illuminations? Cause it was so, why am I still holding the sign? Can y'all see the sign? It reminds me of my late grandmother. Epcot was her favorite part. Some of the best times that I had in my life was sitting down with her waiting for Illumination. And the year she passed, we all went to go watch it. We sat there and we just cried cause it reminded of us of her and, and that love. It's amazing how these, things that Disney does, these shows, these parades have such a deep connection to us because I promise you when we were watching it, it was like she was there with us. It was like she was there. But then here comes Happily Ever After and makes wishes look like an old sad puppy dog that's limping on its last leg. I know that sounds brutal, but y'all gotta be honest. Oh, I was a part of that mob. I was a part of that mob. Hey everybody, it's Molly. Morgan and I are so excited about this new series. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can know when new episodes come out. One more RTT right now? Here's a playlist of every episode. One more All Ears? Click over here to watch a video of me trying to do every show in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Thanks for watching.